Chemistry lecture number 51, the mole. Oftentimes we use a word to describe a numerical quantity. For example, we'll say a dozen eggs instead of saying 12 eggs. And it's easier to say a ream of paper than it is to say 500 sheets of paper. Likewise, in chemistry, we use the mole to represent a specific number. Uh, in the same way that the word dozen means 12 and the word ream means 500, the word mole, sometimes shortened to MOL, uh, represents the number 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So one mole is this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And it's used to describe representative particles. And what are representative particles? A representative particle is either an atom, molecule, or formula unit of an ionic compound. So helium, well that's an atom, H2O, that's a molecule, NaCl, that's an ionic compound, and we refer to this as a, a formula unit. So uh, moles are used to describe the number of atoms, molecules, or formula units we have. Now where did this number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, come from? Well, it was defined as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Now, carbon-12 is an isotope of carbon. You remember this notation? So this is a carbon atom that has six protons, and then add another six, and that'll give you the total number of neutrons. So carbon-12 is a particular type or isotope of carbon. It's one that has six protons and six neutrons. Another isotope of carbon is carbon-14. That one has six protons and uh, eight neutrons, but we're only interested in carbon-12. Well, anyway, if you have 12 grams of this isotope carbon-12, you have one mole or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of carbon-12. So that means that 12 grams of carbon-12 will have this many particles or this many atoms. All right? So 12 grams of carbon-12 have that many atoms of carbon in it. All right? So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, it's also called Avogadro's number. Okay, so we're going to be converting particles to moles and vice versa. Calculate the number of moles that contain 1.204 times 10 to the 24 atoms of sodium. So how many moles does this many atoms of sodium represent? Here's what we're going to do. We're going to convert atoms into moles. And to do this, we need to use a certain relationship. Um, we need to know that uh, one mole of sodium means you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna do some factor labeling to convert this quantity uh, into moles. So when we factor label, we take the number we wanna convert and write it as a fraction, 1.204 times 10 to the 24th atoms of sodium, and we'll make it a fraction by putting it over one. All right, so that's what we want to convert. And we want to convert it from atoms into moles. Well, I've got atoms on top, and I want to get rid of it, so I need to put atoms on the bottom. We'll put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of, uh, on the bottom and one mole on top. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of sodium, and then a mole of sodium on top. All right, so atoms of sodium on top will cancel with atoms of sodium on the bottom. 1.204 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That'll give you two. Your calculator will say two. We need correct number of significant digits. This is three significant digits. That's four significant digits. We take the fewest number of significant digits. So we'll call this 2.00 times 10 to the, no, it's just going to be 2, sorry. Yeah, 2 moles of Na. So what all that means is that if you have that many atoms of sodium, you have 2 moles of sodium. Okay, let's try another one that's similar. Calculate the number of moles that contain uh, 4.50 times 10 to the 24th atoms of zinc. All right, once again, we're starting with atoms, and we want to convert it into moles, so we're going to be converting atoms into moles. Right, and we need an equality. Well, 
one mole of zinc is the same as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of zinc. Now we take the number we want to convert, write it as a fraction, 4.50 times 10 to the 24th atoms of zinc. We're trying to go from atoms to zinc, I'm sorry, atoms to moles. I've got atoms on top, I want to get rid of it. So I'm going to put 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms on the bottom and then one mole on top. All right. Atoms on top will cancel with atoms on the bottom, leaving us with moles of zinc on top, which is what we want. So 4.5 times 10 to the 24 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Well, let's go ahead and do that. 4.50 times 10 to the 24th divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. All right, so that's our raw answer, 7.475, 7.475083. And then we want three significant digits because that's the fewest number of significant digits in both of our uh, operating numbers. This number passed here, this is greater than 5. It's not 5, it's 5083, which is greater than just 5. So we round this up. This is going to be 7.48 moles of zinc. Okay. Let's try another one. How many sucrose molecules are in 3.5 moles of C12H22O11? So that's the formula for sucrose. All right, here we go. <clears throat> and this one, let's see. We're given moles, 3.5 moles. And they're asking for how many molecules. So we're going to convert moles into molecules. All right. I know that one mole of sucrose is the same as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of sucrose. Alright, so let's write the number we want to convert as a fraction, 3.50 moles C12H22O11, put it over 1, write it as a fraction. All right, we want to go from moles to molecules. I have moles of sucrose on top. I want to get rid of it, so I need moles of sucrose on the bottom. So I'm going to write one mole of sucrose on the bottom and that many molecules of sucrose on top. So one mole C12H22O11 is the same as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. C12H22O11. All right, we've got moles of sucrose on top, moles of sucrose on the bottom, so those cancel. We're left with molecules of sucrose, which is what we want, our final answer. 3.50 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Let's see what we get. 3.50 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's going to give me raw answer, 2.107 times 10 to the 24th. We want to round this to uh, three significant digits because we have three significant digits here and here. So that's seven, which is greater than five. So it's going to be 2.11 times 10 to the 24th molecules. C12, H22, O11. All right, so we can do one more. How many formula units of silver nitrate are in 3.25 moles of silver nitrate? All right, let's see here. Again, we're going to go uh, three. Uh, this is, we're going to go from moles to formula units. All 
All right. And I know that uh, one mole is the same as 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. I suppose I should have done that first. One mole of AgNO3. Okay, so 3.25 moles of silver nitrate. That's the quantity we want to convert. Put that over one. We've got moles of silver nitrate on top. I want to get rid of it. So I need to put moles of silver nitrate on the bottom. So I'm going to put this on the bottom. One mole of silver nitrate. And then on top, one mole of silver nitrate is the equivalent of 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Silver nitrate. All right, moles of silver nitrate on top, moles of silver nitrate on the bottom, they cancel. 3.25 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. 3.25 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Okay, so that's going to give me raw answer 1.9565 times 10 to the 24th. And we want three significant digits. So this will be rounded to 1.96 times 10 to the 24th formula units. AG NO3. All right, lots of factor labeling in the, this section here. For a PDF transcript of this lecture, go to www.richardlouis.com. This has been Chemistry Lecture number 51, The Mole.